Yes, I went to a furry convention. That was something else. Absolutely amazing time, uh, in all honesty. I had a lot of positive uh, vibe experiences, a lot of uh, unique things happened, and uh, I had a couple that were just not so good. I had a couple, I had one particular negative experience out of the whole thing, and I don't think that it was the fault of the con itself. I, I think it was the the panel that it became and it became something that it wasn't supposed to be. Going to a furry convention, going to any convention is a very uh, unique experience in itself. I've gone to Animathon many times. I've gone to the Edmonton Comic Book Expo many, many times. I have signatures with uh, many people. I have a Stan Lee poster you can see it there up on the wall that is signed and authenticated uh that it is a stan lee uh signature and that it's a poster that he created you know i'm no different to the scene of conventions and a furry convention is a very different experience uh generally furries are people that like anamorphic or humanized traits in animals uh, or not so much in animals but in cartoons imagining a human as a animal and we you you look at things like video games you look at games like Star Fox. You look at one of the original cartoons by Disney of Robin Hood with the fox once again, and every character being this, uh, this character that's larger than life, but they're an animal and they walk around in two legs. And that is the whole essence of the furry fandom. There's certain things in, in the furry fandom that is very unique to it. And, uh, there's certain things that I think go maybe a little too far. Uh, it, it's a fandom that is largely LGBTQ. Um, like it is a strong amount of it there. Now, part of it I think has kind of lost the way of the history, but uh, you know, learning the history, learning more about it, I believe that they're they try to promote things like these meetups that happen in these uh, events and just try to make it around a hotel so they can go do their th and go do stuff in private and that's part of the show apparently that's not the side that i particularly like and i think that's okay and i think a lot of people that are in, in and around the furry fandom believe the same sort of thing it just happens to have that undertone sense in it now things that i thought were absolutely amazing they 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 do a rave pretty much every night to the with the djs dj getting mixed up every time and you watch and you walk around the space and you see people dressed up in their in their fur suits and dancing to rave style music this really brought me back to my good old days when when i went clubbing i used to be that goth kid that would go to uh, a place that was called new city suburbs at the time uh we would go and dance our face off for hours on end and get completely smashed on absence and uh you know those were the fun days of uh dressing up and going out and clubbing and of course we don't do that anymore but that's kind of what it really reminded me of is that nostalgic feel of getting out there getting to a club and people don't having to care what you do on the dance floor as long as you're having fun and enjoying yourself that's what matters other things i really liked was the the inflatable pool panel that they held i thought it was absolutely amazing i actually did a video on this and if you've not seen that video go watch that video i think you would absolutely enjoy it um other things that i really enjoyed getting up close and personal to the fursuits the furry fursuits it was it's something else and it really puts on a show it, it it's a really unique experience to have this many fursuiters around you at one time at one point i was just getting like dragged out of it i was like there's too much here you get to a sense that it's just too overwhelming uh when you have that many people in costume you kind of get creeped out a little bit um especially when you stand in the mix of them in the middle of them trying to do a photo shoot with everyone 
in a fursuit, which is absolutely insanity. And I got to say, the smell that you get on that is absolutely one of the craziest eh, things. I Listen, I go to Fragapalooza, and Fragapalooza is a four-day gaming marathon where generally people aren't taking a shower because there isn't a shower to be had. And by day three, things get a little ripe. And I got to say... That was a little bit much in the middle of that. Uh, there were certain aspects where you're like, okay, I got to go walk over there because the smell that's in the center of this thing is no. It, it, it's something that I'm never going to forget, especially when my eyes were watering. That's one of the aspects of walking around in the middle of uh, watching people in these fursuits. Now, there was a lot that I thought was going on there. You know, I've, I've added some feedback and the one negative experience I had, I felt it was overly negative and I felt that it wasn't something that was uh, promoting the con in the best of light. I, I don't believe, it really plays into the stereotype of uh, the, the furries uh, being not so nice under under the skin or under the layer that we see and the one panel that i did uh attend was a it was a trash gaming panel and it was supposed to be lewd and hilarious and just some of the worst games that you see on the internet right now they covered a few games but it was one in particular that i thought was a little bit far and it's the fact that they had played it for over half an hour and I was, you know, this is supposed to be a panel where you're laughing at these things and just, uh, just getting past the, the whole sexuality of what this is. And I found it disgusting and absolutely gross. I, I found it as something that was disturbing and I n wanted to nope the F out of that room so fast but i stuck to my guns i gutted down i buried my face in my phone and i actually made a short for the channel during that uh completely away from that with some of the footage that i had filmed that day and it was it was an experience of all of its own when you looked around the room people you know the first two to five minutes people were laughing they were making jokes they were making silly comments about 20 minutes into this game, everyone's just sitting there like, uh-huh, is this still going on? About 25 minutes, people are starting to be like, okay, can we move on to a different game? Can we do something more? 30, 35 minutes, and it was like, okay, this is too far. It, it, after about five minutes of playing that game, watching that game being played, it was like, no that's too far. It's too much. I'm not going to say the name of the game because um, if you want to find out the name of the game, you need to join my Discord. Uh, and you can come into my Discord and you can ask me directly and I will tell you and show you the name of the game. That's how that's going to work because I am not putting that on YouTube. That's how disturbed I was with this. There's certain things, certain aspects of running a panel if you're running a panel and it's about showing off gaming, uh, certain games, I think the panel was an hour long. So taking up over half the panel on one particular game, I thought did a real disservice to that panel. And I really do think it was a giant failure in that panel because of the things that were also being shown in that. And they try to promote furry convention as like a sex positive uh, environment in that sense. That's not something that I uh, buy into. Uh, I believe it's a, a convention. And if people are going to have sex and do things like that, they're more than happy to go do it. Uh, when I'm there for a first time, I yes, I'm taking in a 18 plus. They were ID checking at the door. When I'm taking something like that in for the first time, and this is my first experience into the fandom, it doesn't leave a good impression for myself. And I believe it really did bring down the convention overall. I It almost to the point where I let it ruin my weekend. And I said, no, I'm not going to let this ruin my weekend. I'm going to buckle down, ignore that this actually happened during the con and move on from that and do something else. And after that was done, I left and did other things and just did things that made me happy because that did not make me happy it did not rub the tummy fluff very well and i have no problems with sex 
or that type of content. I just felt felt like what it, the panel was supposed to be was completely off the sidelines. I, I don't believe it was very positive in that sense. There was other things that I uh, attended. I attended a content creation um, one-on-one and I felt like I was the guy in the room that shouldn't have been there because I, 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 I just... I didn't want to bring down the panel because I, I, I wanted to start asking questions uh, with the person presenting it. And I felt if I could have talked to him privately afterwards, it would have been more, more detailed in that sense, instead of trying to sit there and say, listen, what you, the ideas that you have here are wrong. I didn't want to do that in front of the panel. I asked one question because there was a clarification that I requested and it, it, uh, there was just a little bit of information that I, I knew was wrong because they were talking about a premium version of OBS. And I'm like, there's no premium version of OBS. There's premium versions of Steam Labs. Um, and that's a little bit different, but then they didn't get into the full details on on the the programs themselves because these programs when you do steam labs and obs there's two different things that you have to worry about steam labs is very resource heavy with your computer so if you are trying to stream video games steam labs can be a detriment when you get into bigger games um the vendor hall was absolutely fantastic i met a lot of great people in there i actually bought a pair of shorts i bought a few items i bought a uh, a couple keychains that was a lot of fun just to have these artistries that were unique in themselves uh the dance competition oh my god can furries dance i have never seen this before in my life you, you, they gather around this circle. People sit on the floor, they have chairs set up and everything, and furries come into the middle of the uh, dance floor and they bust a move like nobody can. It, it, the business behind that was absolutely insane that I watched a furry stand on his head and jump back to his feet in full fursuit. I was blown away. Overall, the entire journey, the entire thing of the furry convention well exploring the fandom it's led me down a road asking questions about myself my content and about the fandom in general and this is something that's been going on for the last couple days now that i've had time to relax reflect a little bit see what's going on in and around and i keep asking certain questions about the channel about the way that we've been presented here on the channel about what this actually is and when I came up with the idea of making this channel and calling myself the Proud Canadian Phoenix, I had no idea there was uh, the, the furry fandom aside of things. I didn't look into it. I've always heard, oh, furries, they're, they're weird people. They're absolutely nothing like uh, what you want to expect. They're, it's the convention that was not something I ever had interest in. You know, I, I've done cosplay, I've gone to Animathon, I've done the Comic Book Expo before, and I remember walking around the Expo in my my pain from Naruto uh, outfit, and I remember walking two steps, getting photos, walking two more steps, getting photos. It was one of these situations where I was like, this is insane, I can't move. And the difference in a furry con or a furry convention in a sense is everyone's dressed up as a furry. Everyone's there dressed up in this anamorphic place. And I was the one going around being like, okay, can I get some video of you so I can do this? And they've translated immensely well. I am super stoked with the videos that I have put up showing off everyone's, uh, everyone's uh, fursuit, everyone's heads, all this stuff. The three videos that I put up with, with the content in it, I felt are some of the best things I've ever done on this channel. And that's saying a lot. You know, I this is someone that sit, has been sitting here in the rut of commentary for so damn long i have been in this rut and just talking about news article after news article it's absolutely depressing and it's not anything that makes me happy it, it just you know 
talking about Assassin's Creed Shadows, how the game, it, w it was marketed as a historical accuracy game in Japan, and now they're throwing, the, the Japanese government is investigating it because it's not. You know, talking about Sweet Baby Inc., how they're ruining games, talking about how Kutako's Alyssa Makante is an absolute witch when it comes to video game content and trying to knock down gamers it was things that i absolutely hate talking about these things because it's it's full of drama it's full of politics it's stuff that i never thought i would go down that path you know i'd much rather sit there and do a game guide the problem with that is now you've got to play through the game you got to get through the game then you got to come up with interesting tips and tricks to go through and that was the difference here that's the complete difference with uh, the furry fandom right now is I haven't stopped laughing and I, 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 I haven't stopped smiling at looking at everyone. It, you know, you go into this, I, I, I'm editing these videos and I sit there and I'm, I'm like, that's really cool to see. You know, that's really cool to see. I need to add this video in there. I need to do this certain thing. Wait, I'm not me. No, it's you. No, no, it's me. <laughs> it's oh, yeah. oh my god, it's me. Go. Oh my god. Oh my god, it's Jesse. Oh my god. It's Jesse oh the Blue Fox. Oh my god. Oh, my god. Here. Here. Oh, you, you guys are. Yeah, yeah. Need to. Yeah, yeah. Need to. Ah, ah, ah. Five. I know you. Yeah. Oh, I'm so strong. Look at me. Oh, that's a gun show. Gun show. Look at that. Look at that gun show. And it's it's giving me something more in in that sense. And where does that leave us? Like, where does that leave me as a content creator? The channel was never about being a furry or anything like that, and it just it, it it's created this completely out of my element scenario and I've been exploring things and I've been talking with people and it just leaves me in a different sense of reality right now that something that I had created something that I did back when I was 13 years old with 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 the name Cinder Shadow it, I never thought it was where it is today it's always been a part of my life you know and i was like oh you know what i might as well just make my channel my my gamer tag my my essence my at this point it's a persona um i might as well make it something more and then growing up we uh, you know the phoenix was my elementary school and it was the one thing that really resonated with me christ you guys are sending me artwork with phoenixes on it and it's some of the most gorgeous things that i see my my desktop my computer is a damn phoenix it, it, this is something that's been on my computer case for 10 years now i just i've been beside myself this whole time like beside the exploration of this i guess it, it, it's something that's been missing for a very long time um and i had an interaction as well on on the second night after i was done that live stream uh that we did from there i you know i was done that live stream i was hooking my phone up to the battery pack that i carry and i was just sitting there looking at my phone kind of dejected just going okay i don't know what to do now you know i didn't have battery power left on my phone to go shoot video i didn't have anything that i could do um and you know i had some random people come up to me asking and they were like what are you doing sitting here all alone why are you here all alone and that interaction ha has led me to so many more things going on with life and it's really what what drove me forward to to realize that i am missing my absolute friends my my friends that passed away two years ago. You know, I, I had a friend pass away on, on Boxing Day. He had a heart attack and died. He dropped dead in the street. Eight, you know, and then after that happened, I had to reach out to my other, my, my other friend. Uh, he had moved away to Montreal and he, he moved away 
to go to university and to do something more. And he was, he's a fellow Sparky. He's an electrician like me. And he had moved away and I had to get a hold of him. And he, 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 he hasn't made it. He never made it easy to get a hold of him. And I, I had to get a hold of him and let him know that our friend had passed away. And, you know, I was finally able to get a hold of him a few days later, let him know all these things happened. Well, eight months later, he took his own life. And that's where I'm sitting now you know, beside myself. And this interaction that I had, the, the guy came up to me, he let me know that he's a, uh, he's an artist. He does, uh, transformative, uh, personas and furry art and all this other stuff where, where it's a human being that transforms into their persona. And it, it, it's some great art. And I thought it was absolutely crazy, you know, and, but that was besides the point because he had a couple friends that joined. They were, they were gay, completely gay. But then they started talking to each other and they started talking about Dungeons and Dragons and some other topics. And that's when it all hit me that the fandom is like regular people. They're completely regular people outside of everything. And they're just people that love the same thing we do. They, they love Dungeons and Dragons. They love fantasy. They, 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 and they just LARP in real life, the live action role-playing. These are all things I have done. They're all things that I've done long before the channel. I, you know, I used to meet up with people and go do live action role-playing once a week. You know, we'd meet in a bar and the bar, it had its own room. You, you'd get your classic poutine at the bar. You'd get a couple pints and you'd role play with Vampire, the Masquerade and Dungeons and Dragons. And, you know, it led to other things like going to what was called Sunfall, which is you go camping out in the middle of the woods. You make a costume and you camp as if you're, if you're playing in the middle of a Dungeons and Dragons campaign with, instead of it being uh, D20s, you use two D6s. And generally the, the case that you get your, your set of dice in, you would take one of those cases and put the dice in there and then you'd shake it that way. Those are the things that we, I, I've used to do. And it, it's, it's coming full circle at this point. You know, I've been struggling to survive for so long long for so long that I have forgotten all the things that made me happy. And that's where I'm at right now. The absolute amazing suits that I, I witnessed this weekend, the, the interactions, the last one I did, the headhunt, um, where, where I'm standing there, I am smiling ear to ear because I am just having a blast filming these things, you know, I, I've got a blue fox and an orange fox beside me. We have Don the deer that's in the photo too. His costume's absolutely amazing. And I'm just sitting there smiling as, as this fox is just doing, you know, the gun show in front of my camera. I'm laughing. I'm like, dude, what are you doing? I'm like, come back here so we can all get in this shot. And I, that, I, you know, I had realized I hadn't taken many pictures. I had taken so much video and pictures of everyone else that I wasn't getting many of myself absolutely having a good time. And I was like, you know what? I need to do this. It's been a completely different experience. And this is where I'm at now. This is where I'm at. This is probably the, one of the longest and longer videos I'm going to post, you know, after I do editing. And I just got to say thank you to Fur A because it's led me down a path that I never knew was there. I'm revisiting a lot of the music that I used to listen to back in the days of going to the emo goth club that I used to be heavily into. And a lot of that music is transformative. It, it, it's always talking about finding a new world. Just up in the air. I, I don't know where to go at this point. And, you know, I've been looking and looking. You know, I've, I've talked to a couple communities. I've been talking with uh, people at Furre. I mean, I have 11,000 photos I have to go through from the dance competition because I put my camera on a burst mode. 11,000 photos. I've already picked out a few of them and they're absolutely amazing action shots of some some furries doing dance routines the fact that 
furries can dance is just beyond belief. There, there's a lot that I, I mentioned in, uh, in my letter that I sent to the, uh, the convention. Uh, you know, I sent a letter saying, these are things that you can improve on. These are things that I saw. These are things I didn't like. These are things that I really liked. Right. And I hope the, I, I, I'm sure they've already read it because the person that put on the panel for the inflatable pool, pool toys instantly followed me on Twitter. So I'm pretty sure they've already read it in that sense. And I, I'm hoping things go very well for next year. Now, am I going to go? I don't know. It all depends on if I get sent there or not. You know, it was something that I had a blast. Um, will I save up money to go to something like this? The gold level I bought and thought did a lot of things. It added food. It, it let me skip lines. It, it let me do things that was generally, if I went there as a normal person, I, it wouldn't have let me do those things. And I think it was, uh, I, I think the gold level has that value with it. Um, the panels aside, I, I honestly, the panels, I didn't buy into many of them. I thought it was just a good old time to uh, see a lot of people. The dance parties would be fun to do. Um, I don't know. You know, I went through this. I've had ups and downs all the way through this entire weekend. And now that I've had the chance to sit down and kind of reflect on my my uh, entertainment value with it, I was fully entertained the entire weekend. You know, the first suit parade got canceled, but that didn't matter. Uh, the, the entire weekend was a blast. And, uh, if you're ever in Edmonton and you want to do a meetup, maybe we do a meetup at Furry next year or something like that, because it could be an interesting experience. Anyway, I'm your proud Canadian Phoenix Center Shadow. I'm signing off here. Don't forget to like and subscribe and have yourselves a great day. <music>